So, what about PAMs? Well, ever since WABC first went top 40 in 1960, Bill Meeks, the owner and founder of PAMs in Dallas, tried to sell jingles to WABC. Didn't succeed, although PAMs did have other clients in New York City through the years. PAMs had done some jingles for WINS, W-I-N-S, and also WMGM. But in 1962... Pams finally got to do a package for WABC, which began a relationship that lasted 12 years. We'll talk about that in the next segment. John Wolford on B1 Radio. Well, it's time to talk about Pams, P-A-M-S. Pams was a jingle producer in Dallas, Texas. What did those letters mean? production advertising merchandising service just needed a name and came up with it that was the voice of william b meeks better known as bill meeks he started pams in 1951 and he hired me 20 years later pams was originally set up as an advertising agency and they specialized in making commercial jingles, musical commercials, for local and regional advertisers. But Bill had worked with Gordon McClendon at KLIF in the late 40s, where they had started making jingles for the radio station. Tom Merriman was also at KLIF at this time. It was really the birthplace of the Dallas jingle idea. During the 50s, though, Bill transitioned Pam's to focus more on producing radio station ID jingles. And by the 60s, that was the company's specialty, and their sound became the sound of top 40 radio stations across the nation. And without a doubt, beginning in 1962, PAMS created some of WABC's most memorable jingles. And tempo, take 137. 77 W-A-B-C. That jingle, which is called the Contempo Sig from Pam Series 18, went on the air in 1962. The station immediately adopted it as their top of the hour jingle, coming out of the news to start another hour of programming. And that jingle remained in use in that capacity for the rest of the decade. Loyal fans will remember it a little better with Dan Ingram's voiceover at the beginning of it. More music on 77 WABC. Pam's first sale to WABC in 1962 was not a custom project. It was a collection of cuts from existing syndicated jingle packages that had been produced by Pam's between the years 1960 and 1962. So, if you're keeping score at home, that first order included jingles from Pam's series 14, 15, 16, 18, 22, and 23. This is 77 W-A-B-C Where you're hearing things Where you're hearing things Get up and go, go, go Everybody bet you're feeling great today Get up, make that go We're with you all the way 77 W-A-B-C 77 77 W-A-B-C W-A-B-C Speaking of in New York, one interesting feature of these jingles is that the vocals were recorded in New York, not in Dallas. 
The music tracks, of course, were recorded in Dallas. And ordinarily, if a station was to buy some of these jingles, they would be sung in Dallas. But WABC was a very unionized station. All of the announcers belonged to AFTRA, and all the engineers belonged to NABET. And part of the station's agreement with AFTRA is that they would not employ non-union talent to be on the air. While most of the singers in Dallas were not AFTRA members at that time, they didn't have to be because they sang and worked in Texas, which is a right-to-work state anyway. But ABC didn't want to take any chances of getting into a union hassle with AFTRA. So they said, okay, Pams, we'll buy those jingles, but you have to sing them with a vocal group in New York. And that's exactly what happened. Pams brought a tape containing the music tracks up to New York, hired some of the best session singers in New York at the time, and recorded these jingles there. These are unstacked New York vocals. 77 WABC. A majority of the jingles in this initial compilation came from a package called Sono Sational, otherwise known as Pam's Series 18. And Series 18 was the first jingle package ever to introduce an effect called Sonovox. Sonovox is a way to make a sound or an instrument appear to be talking or singing. Here's Bill Meeks again explaining the initial concept behind some of the jingles in Series 18. The whole idea, my idea, was that people would be listening to the radio and they would hear the band introduction or they'd hear steel guitar or some instrument actually playing the logo of the station. They'd say, gee, did I hear that guitar talk? Or was that a, something talked? But uh, uh, actually over the years that we recorded it, it finally became a more of a sound in its, uh, that people identified with the Sonovox rather than the original idea of it sounding like a flute or a guitar talking or we had a, a piano talking on some of the very first ones and they were very difficult to redo. Anyway, Series 18 was quite a success. 77 WABC You have to remember that nobody had ever heard anything quite like this before, and the whole idea of instruments singing the call letters WABC made a lot of listeners think, what was that? Am I hearing things? Which is why several of the jingles incorporated those words as a little double entendre. You're hearing things. You're hearing things. On 77 WABC. Aside from the attention-getting novelty of it, another reason there were so many Sonovox cuts in that first package was because... The Sonovox didn't have to be a member of AFTRA because the Sonovox wasn't a singer. The Sonovox was an effect. So the Sonovox jingles could be produced in Dallas the way they normally would be at PAMS, and the station wouldn't have to pay those rather high union singer rates for those jingles. 77 WABC C C C As I mentioned earlier, Pams had done some jingles for other New York stations before they got the WABC account. Included in that list of stations was WMGM. Some of the WMGM jingles had also been sung in New York, but with a slightly different sounding group, including this jingle from Pams Series 16. Which made it a bit curious when this appeared on WABC. Seventy-seven 
WABC. That's certainly not the first or the last time that a jingle would appear on more than one station in a market. A lot of the Pam's jingles and the jam jingles for WABC later appeared on WCBS-FM and some other stations as well. That's why jingle packages are typically licensed to a radio station for a particular period of time instead of in perpetuity. And as long as you only have your jingle on one station at a time, everybody's usually happy. Here's yours truly, 77 WABC with the weather. All right, here's the story from Peter the Meter Reader and his weather machine and our TV weather girl, Fat Pontoon. Come here, Fat, give me the weather. I'm coming, Dan, I'm coming. Had to run up the stairs again. The elevator's broken. Still, huh? Yeah, I got in it and I went right to the basement. Well, you weigh a lot. Here's the forecast. Sunny and mild this afternoon, high in the upper 50s to low 60s. How about that? As you can probably hear, the DJs enjoyed using these jingles. WABC, Action Central News. News first, fast. News five minutes sooner on WABC AM and FM, New York. The ABC radio network continued to use the package of themes and sounders that Johnson Sade had produced for them in the late 50s. That news sounder stayed on the air until the end of 1967. Well, by now, you probably know what that melody is trying to tell you, even without any words. That, of course, is the whole idea. So let's talk about that melody for a minute, because that was the other major turning point in the history of WABC's jingles. The melody that was used for 77 WABC was actually inspired, known as We'll Have Manhattan, This was a song that was written by the team of Rogers and Hart. That's Richard Rogers and Lorenz Hart. They wrote it for a 1925 review called Garrick Gaieties. The lyrics of the song actually describe simple delights of Manhattan for a young couple in love. Of course, the joke is that the so-called delights are actually some of the worst or cheapest sights that New York has to offer So it's really a song about what you can do in Manhattan when you have no money. But WABC did have enough money to pay for the rights to the song. They actually paid Rogers and Hart thousands of dollars a year for a long time to be able to use that distinctive melody. And that melody is still being used by WABC today, 57 years later. 77 WABC In the earliest days, the WABC disc jockeys were known as the Swingin' Seven from 77. That didn't really catch on. Then they tried to be the good guys, but they only promoted it half-heartedly. And then WMCA decided to just steal it from them and really, really promote it. So WABC needed something else to call their DJs. They settled on the phrase, the All-Americans, because it was the American Broadcasting Company, after all. They figured nobody else would steal that from them. And that required a new jingle package. We'll be talking about that coming up. John Wolfert. B1 Radio. We are exploring the jingle history of WABC Radio in New York, And we've arrived at the year 1963. Let's swing with the All-Americans on 77 WABC. This was another turning point for WABC. They decided that their air staff would be called the All-Americans. And of course, they wanted to reinforce that with a jingle package, So this time they asked Pams to do a custom package. But it almost didn't happen. Bill Meeks explains. Series 26 was the All-American series, which was uh, an idea that I wasn't too sure of. When WABC said they wanted to go with the All-American, I asked them, Wally Schwartz, if I could have a day to make up my mind as to whether or not I wanted to do it. (laughs) 
so the next morning when I got there, I made up my mind I did, and he said well, that it's a good thing that I'd made up my mind that way because that's the way they were going, whether it was with me or somebody else. And so the only hesitancy I'd ever had was that there had been a, one of these overnight cheap bus routes called the All-American Bus Route, and I thought that everybody probably had a bad image of it or something. 77 W-A-B-C, All-American. Luckily, Pams did decide to join the All-American team. The greatest team in the world. You! And 77 W-A-B-C, All-American. All-American Series 26 was another jingle package that was sung in New York with the New York singers, just like the 1962 package the year before. But of course, when Pam sent out demonstration tapes of these jingles to other stations to try and sell them in other markets, they used the Dallas vocals on the demo because those were the people who were going to sing it for the rest of the country. You're on your mark. Get set. W-A-B-C. Hardcore WABC fans may recognize the end of that jingle as the tag from the weekly super hit rundown promo. This week, WABC proudly presents these super hit sounds. Roy Orbison. The Shangri-Las. Leader of the pack. Manfred Mann. Singing. Chad Stewart and Jeremy Clyde. I'll think of summer days again. The Supremes. Baby love, my baby love. Plus dozens of other top stars in continuing entertainment presented by the All-Americans. More minutes of the music you want to hear are on... 77 WABC. This package was actually a combination of tracks. Some of them were done specifically for WABC... Others had been done for sister station WXYZ in Detroit. Smile every day with 77 WABC All-American. You'll notice that this package not only had a lyrical theme, All-American, it also had a musical theme. There was a consistent use of this melody to represent the words All-American. And you can clearly hear that music theme used in the trailing bed of this jingle. 77 W-A-B-C Turns to gold I gotta say, that jingle never sounded better than on this day in 1964 when thousands of screaming teenage Beatle fans sang along with it live on the air as they were standing in the street outside the Beatles' hotel, each listening to WABC on their own transistor radio, just hoping to get a glimpse of the Fab Four. And if anybody ever tries to tell you that radio station jingles don't work, just play them this. That's pretty good. You think they could do it a little louder this time if we play a different jingle for them? Yeah, they'll try it again. They're All great. Right. We love them. Let's go with another jingle Let's for the Let's go crowd. with another one, Dan. Your world looks great. From 77 That's That's almost good enough. One more time with another Beautiful. jingle. One more time with another One jingle, all right? Time. So Here clearly the arrival of the Beatles had a big impact on WABC and the whole world. WABC really cashed in on it, though, calling themselves W.A. Beatles C for a while. And they had Pams make some special Beatle-ish jingles to play in front of Beatle Records. It's time to hear a band. Hello, I'm John 
Tom, I'm Paul, I'm George, I'm Ringo, we love WABC! The Beatles Spectacular is really moving Woo! on 77 WABC. The All-American jingles were good, but that phrase never really caught on with the audience. And besides, Rick Sklar, the program director, didn't think that they really had enough energy to represent the station. So at the end of 1963, Pam's embarked on a new custom package for WABC. It became Series 27, The Jet Set. (laughs) 77 WABC. Yes, jet travel was still a bit of a novelty in those days, and this package combined an all male vocal group singing in unison with sound effects and everything they could think of to add action to the station's sound. 77 WABC. Where the action is. But this package also had another secret weapon. Again, from a conversation we had in 1972, here's Bill Meeks to explain. Series 27 was the uh, jet set, which utilized a, an Indian girl. Uh, her real name, her Indian name is Bright Eyes Long Knife, and her name is Rutherford now. Uh, Glenny Wartis Rutherford, but at any rate, she had a real high range, and we voiced her with the trumpet players, and she would be screaming along a, an octave higher than the brass, or in the same range with them, or up high, to give it a very fast, exciting sound. If you'll notice the orchestration in it, there are no baritones, no uh, bass trombones, or anything in the lower range. It's all up high, except for the rhythm. Uh, the bass player was to be kept unencumbered and uncluttered so you could really get the movement of the series. Stay this weekend where the music is. Saturday, Sunday, WABC. These jingles really did give WABC and the hundreds of other stations who bought them around the world a unique, exciting sound. It's a lovely day in New York town. In New York City, we entertain you. So plan your weekend with music and us. Hi there, Kimo Sabi. This is Big Dan Ingram, reminding you that everything you want to hear this weekend is at 77 on your radio dial. The hotline of hits. All the great music from the WABC Super Hit Survey, introduced by the All Americans of Radio Herb Oscar Anderson, Bob Dayton, Scott Muni, Cousin Bruce Morrow, Charlie Greer, Bob Lewis, and yours truly, Dan Ingram. The hairy one with the big feet. Plus, news as it happens, weather before it happens, all the late sports scores, road reports of traffic conditions, and our expanded coastal reports for all skippers out there. WABC is such great listening. Tune 77 Radio every Saturday and Sunday all summer long. Remember, the weekend swing to on 77 Radio WABC. Your weekend fun. Yeah. Saturday, Sunday, WABC. The number one sound in New York, baby. Do you love me? You know it. Dave Park Five, number 20. The super hit sound of 77 WABC with the hotline of hits. A lot of stations used this as a news intro, and unfortunately, the news wasn't always good. We interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin from ABC Radio. Three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade today in downtown Dallas, Texas. And at that exact moment, on November 22nd, 1963, musicians were in the studio at Pam's working on the tracks to Series 27. And I'm told that when they broke for lunch and heard what was going on, everyone was stunned and nobody returned to work that day. (laughs) 
Our WABC Jingle History continues in the next file, part two.